All right. So welcome everyone. Um, I'm Jeff Oxendine. I'm the founder and CEO of Health Career Connection. I'm joined by uh, Cesar Robles Martinez and uh, Boo um, Ibrahim Biangoro, who are our HCC team members. Um, we're real excited to speak with you to share our opportunities and to hopefully encourage many of you um, to, to go ahead and apply for our uh, summer internship program. So I'm gonna give an overview of HCC and our program. And then I'm gonna have uh, Caesar and Abu and our alums tell you more about it and, and share their experiences. Caesar is actually an HCC alum himself. Um, so with that, uh, next slide, please. Uh, so HCC is, some, is an organization that I um, co-founded 30 years ago. It's our 30th anniversary. We're real excited about it. Um, it's a program that focuses specifically on undergraduate students um, and people who recently graduated who are passionate about health careers. And it, the whole purpose is to inspire and empower you to become that health leader, health professional that you really want to become and have the impact on health equity and on our communities that you want to have. We do this through our comprehensive career and professional development program, um, which includes a paid internship placement and then participation in our program that includes uh, workshops and includes a number of other things I'll describe for you. And you're in this in a regional cohort with other students from your, your school and other schools that um, are have similar passions and goals. Uh, so next slide, please. So um, as I mentioned, part of HCC is a full-time 10-week internship placement. Um, and we do that in health organizations um, in our different regions. Uh, it's kind of an apprenticeship model where you work under a preceptor, you get to learn by doing. You learn by doing hands-on work. And guess what? In addition to getting great exposure, experience, mentorship, and building your network and building your skills, you get paid. Um, an educational stipend um, for doing that work. Uh, we really want you to get exposed to a wide range of settings. So we have placements in hospitals, health departments, community-based organizations, you know, you name it. And we have some new ones in biotech and pharmaceutical um, organizations that are uh, available um, starting this year. So those are the kinds of roles and that's a little bit about the, the placement. Um, so next slide. Um, there's a question about the timing on, on the quarter system. Um, we can, uh, the start dates are relatively flexible based on the employer and the student. So um, we can accommodate students. We've had Santa Cruz students in the program before and, and we'll have it more and we'll, we'll make it work for you. So uh, as I mentioned, we've been doing this for 30 years. Uh, we have four regions in California where we do our work. Um, and so that includes the Northern California area, um, including Monterey Bay, uh, includes the um, Southern California, Central California, and the Coachella Valley. And we are starting a new regional um, partnership uh, that is gonna be focused on Monterey, Monterey, Monterey Bay area. And the focus there is gonna be on having students like you that are going to school here or people who are from the area um, and having them work with local employers um, and get connected to local networks so that we can build a, a talented, diverse workforce for the, um, for the Monterey Bay area. And so that we can give you all opportunities for jobs and, and uh, you know, economic mobility you know, within the area. Um, I should say that HCC is really, our priority is increasing diversity in the health professions. And, uh, we are strongly encouraging students from all backgrounds to apply, but particularly from African American, Latino, Native American, um, and um, um, Asian populations and bicultural um, backgrounds. Um, but everyone is, is eligible. And um, yeah, we're, we're really trying to create that diverse workforce to address health inequities, to improve racial justice, and to um, improve the health of populations. Next slide, please. So I mentioned in addition to your full-time placement, um, we have a, a very structured and comprehensive summer program. So it's unique in that we have these workshops on career planning, graduate education, 
on built skill building, like building your Excel skills and GIS skills and storytelling and other things. We have uh, virtual or in-person visits to each other's organizations. So you get to see more about what's, what's possible, what's out there. Uh, we have a lot of networking with leaders in the field and with people in your cohort. And um, we, we really focus on helping you become competitive applicants for health profession schools and getting jobs. So we connect you to our partners like Berkeley School of Public Health and Stanford School of Medicine, UCSF School of Medicine um, to help prepare and, and create inroads for you to those programs. Next slide, please. Folks are happy with our program. The interns and uh, the interns are happy and recommend the program to their peers and the employers, the interns are happy and employers are happy that people get jobs. Um, they extend their internships. And, uh, and you can become part of our network of over 3,800 alumni who are doctors, who are public health professionals, mental health professionals, nurses, um, health administrators, you name it. Um, and so you're part of the family once you become part of our comprehensive program. Next slide, please. So to be eligible, um, you have to be enrolled or in a four-year school or a community college and have an, um, or be a recent graduate within the last three years. Uh, it's not for graduate students and not for high school students um, as, as well. Um, it's important to, that you are able to make the full-time commitment in the summer. Um, not taking summer school classes or working part-time jobs or not taking the MCAT. Um, studying for the MCAT, uh, because we really want you to be able to immerse yourself in your placement, the program, and your regional um, cohort so that you get the most out of it and you do a great job so that you get a job afterwards and you, <laughs> people in the health profession schools are ready to snap you up. Next slide, please. So you, to become considered for HCC, um, and I should back up and say that we have both virtual internships and um, in-person and hybrid internships, and we've learned how to make virtual internships work. We also have a virtual health equity scholars program that is one in which um, the, uh, uh, you can do work virtually um, and be part of teams. And we had a team that worked in Santa Cruz County last summer with an organization called One Roof, Under One Roof in Watsonville. And so this is another program that if you can't participate in the full-time internship placement, you can participate in a part-time health equity scholar program. But you, in all cases, you have to go through the application, which includes these components. And the, the most important part is your statement of purpose. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, and a good professional quality uh, resume. Um, you're also going to, you're going to include information about your education background and where you'd want to do your internship and, and who you are and those kinds of things. But this is the application. The next slide. I mentioned the statement of purpose is the core part of the application. It's the part that we really look at first. Um, and uh, you know, th there's some prompts that are in the application. These are the exact prompts that are in there. And um, we have a statement of purpose because we wanna get a, a reflection of who you are and what you wanna do and how this internship fits into it. We also want to have um, to see your, your writing skills, uh, which are important to be in health. And we want you to get some practice writing something like this. And so um, we sometimes writing a statement of purpose can be a daunting thing, but we, we want you to look at this as an opportunity to, to have your voice be heard, to, to practice this work and to be able to, um, to get practice again for grad school. So these are the main things to put. So tell about your story and tell about what you wanna do in the health field. We are looking for people who are interested in public health and health management, community health kinds of things, in addition to a clinical career or instead of a clinical career. And we wanna hear this, this, your, your path to get there and what you wanna do with the program. Next slide, please. So what makes a good statement of purpose? And we do have some resources that you can click to look at that. Um, we'll, we'll be able to provide those, but it's really using your authentic voice, answering the questions carefully that are listed in the prompt, showing your writing skills and uh, the best you can do. It doesn't have to be perfect. 
and then um, to highlight you know, what you wanna get out of the program and it's particularly YHCC. And then start early, you know, it's important. Take some time. The good news with our applications, you can start the application and then um, you don't have to finish it in one sitting. You can do your statement of purpose on the side um, and upload it. Um, and uh, you, know, you wanna tell a story about your, who you are and where you wanna go and then highlight some of your experiences. And it's good to have other people take a look at it and give you some feedback um, along the way, particularly supportive folks. Next slide. And so the, you know, having a resume is important as well. And hopefully, you know, there's some resources I mentioned here about resumes and cover letters. You know, you don't have to write a cover letter, but try to have a one page resume if you can, two pages at the most, um, and have folks like your counselors, advisors, take a look at it for you to give you some feedback. Next slide, please. So we're really looking for fit. So this isn't about GPA. This isn't about um, you know outstanding academic accomplishments. Although it's we're happy to see those those kinds of things, but we're looking for people who are fit with what HCC is about, which is really producing that next generation of diverse health leaders and professionals who want to make a difference in the health field and who care about addressing the needs of underserved populations. As I mentioned earlier, we're, we, are, we are about um, providing opportunity to all, but we particularly wanna support people who are underrepresented in the health professions and who are from the communities most impacted by health inequities and, and um, by um, uh, COVID-19. And then you know, any kind of work, any kind of experience you have in a leadership role or participation in a, in a student health club, um, class projects, um, participation in your church or a community organization of some kind, volunteer experiences. You don't have to have a bunch of experience first. This is a way to get some experience, but we'd like to know what drew you to HCC and what you're gonna be drawing upon in our program. Next slide, please. So um, the process involves you submitting your application by December the 13th. Um, we will then review applications and, and would interview you if you're selected to uh, first round interviews to be in January or uh, early February. Um, then you would go to a host organization and we would try to make a match. We really work hard to, to find the right alignment between what you're good at and what you wanna learn and what skills you wanna develop and then what our organizations are looking for. Next slide. So some of the things that come up um, are things like, do I have to intern in the region? Um, do I have to be from the intern, uh, from the region that I want to intern in? The answer is no. Now, we do like having people that are from the regions that we're in because we want to build a local health workforce and give opportunity to people from the local community. But we have people all over HCC who are not from the regions that are doing that work. As I mentioned, it's only um, undergraduates in the four year or community college or people who've graduated in the last three years. We don't provide housing or relocation costs. Um, and it is a full-time um, commitment, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and it's not to have a summer school for those of you just joined or MCAT prep. And then the internships, you know, you're, we're, we're working closely with our partners to find out whether the internships will be virtual or in-person or a hybrid, I think no one knows at this point. Um, more people are, are beginning to say that they're probably gonna be virtual, but we don't know. You know, hopefully with a vaccine and if we can really change the trend, we might have some in-person ones as well. And last year in the Monterey Bay area, we had people who did in-person for part of the time and, and then virtual for part of the time. Next slide. So as I mentioned earlier, the timeline, the deadline for application is December the 13th at midnight. Don't wait until then to, to uh, start your application or submit it. Uh, I'm a, I'm a long-term procrastinator myself, but the earlier you can start and the more that you can prepare and put your best foot forward is important. I think we already talked about these other kinds of things. And we, as was mentioned earlier, we can accommodate you being on the quarter system to be in the program. Next slide. These are some examples of organizations that we work with in the Monterey Bay area. We worked with the Monterey County Health Department um, for many years. We, in the past, we worked with Santa Cruz Health Department. Um, we've had uh, interns in Salinas at some of the community-based um, organizations there. 
Uh, we have an intern now with the Health Improvement um, Partnership in, in, um, in Santa Cruz County. And um, so we're looking to, and we have a community health centers and hospitals. So you can see some examples. Um, and we're, we really are looking to grow, build out our Monterey County program for this year, or Monterey Bay Area program. We work with these graduate school partners as a way to help get you inroads into these public health and medical schools. And we have students and faculty and admissions people from those programs participating in our program. So um, get connected, learn more. We have a webinar on Monday um, from 10 to 11 about the um, uh, biotech career opportunities we have and internship opportunities, but uh, by signing up with Caesar and Abu, um, you can get more information and follow HCC all the way through to your application is complete. And there's a question in the chat about the, can a student who attends school apply in SoCal? Yes, so the, that's exactly what we're, you know, what we're doing is we're about having, you know, students can be from any place and do internships in the regions that they want as long as they can arrive arrange for housing, you know, in those areas. So that's an overview of HCC and our programs. Um, we really uh, encourage you to apply. We'd love you to become part of the HCC uh, family um, and to help you advance your uh, careers. I'm gonna leave you in the capable hands of Caesar and Abu and Jose. Jose, nice to see you. And uh, thanks for joining today. They're gonna to share more about HCC, about their experiences, and to be able to answer your, your questions. So thank you all very much. And hopefully we'll see you in HCC. Please stay safe and healthy. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, thanks, Mr. Jeff. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Okay, so that was Jeff. He is our HCC um, CEO and co-founder. Um, and you know, just to introduce myself and uh, and Abu. So my name is Caesar. I'm one of the um, executive assistants here to to Jeff and a senior project manager as well. And I was actually well, I'm actually an HCC 2016 alum. Um, and I did my internship at Kaiser Permanente here in Southern California. And I'd be more than happy to also talk about my experience um, when I was an HCC alum. And then Abu. All right, hi everyone. My name is Abu. I am the Associate Program Manager for HCC. I was, I'm not an HCC alum, but um, nevertheless, I'm still very excited to be working with HCC as I've known this organization for quite some time. And yeah, so you can feel free to ask any questions. Um, I also did want to note, we do have another alumni on the call, Arushi as well. So Arushi and Jose um, will be giving their uh, experiences or, yeah. Yes, and, and both um, Jose and Arushi are both uh, HCC alums from 2020. Yeah. Um, and they are both joining us from UC Santa Cruz as well. So uh, <laughs> there's that connection as well. Um, perfect. So. Uh, before we, we kind of talk a little bit about our experiences, are there any questions um, from what Jeff um, presented and kind of like the different uh, application, like the application process or, or anything uh, regarding the, 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 the process of the application? Um, I just wanted to confirm this is something that if someone's graduating this summer, they can still participate in, right? Oh, most definitely, yes. So mm -hmm. it's it's for um, undergraduate students and up to three years of graduation um, from undergrad. Um, so uh, I think that brings us back from to 2017. Uh, they can still apply. Good question. What were the main things you tried to highlight in your personal statement? Yeah, so uh, I can definitely reshare that slide uh, just to kind of, I know this is being recorded, so I want to be able to get the, the exact thing. So let me go ahead and share that one more time. Are you able to see my screen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, so so the uh, statement of purpose is going to be, a, it's approximately 750 words or less. 
um, which brings us to about 7,000 uh, characters. Um, so about, about one page to one page and a half. And some of the things that we um, encourage you to include within the statement of purpose is your background and experiences uh, that have influenced you to why you want to pursue a career in health in the health field, right? Whether it be uh, a, a career in public health or in nursing or in medical or in medicine, and kind of what, what has guided you in your life to kind of get to this point. Also, what are some of your career objectives, you know, thinking more into the future um, in public health or healthcare or even any of the health related fields, you know, healthcare management um, or, any, or any of those fields. Um, you know, what is motivating you towards your objectives? Uh, it, it, are there any barriers you have overcome? You know, a lot of a lot of uh, our alums, you know, came from maybe disadvantaged backgrounds. You know, um, so definitely speak about about all those different things. Um, are there future professional and educational plans that you have in mind? You know how uh, how this internship will help you in pursuing your objectives and plans. Uh, you know, like why why HCC? I think uh, uh, Jeff alluded to that a little bit. Like why HCC over say other other programs that are being held during the summer. Uh, briefly describe uh, your ideal internship experience. Kind of what you want to get out of HCC. What does your perfect internship look like? Um, also, why you feel you should be selected. And also just other information that will help you, help us evaluate you as a candidate. Um, the statement of purpose, what I wanna emphasize or what we wanna emphasize is that we do look at the whole application holistically. So we, if you say, for example, are not doing your GPSA is not that good or say you're a little bit stronger one area than the other, one good thing about our application process is that we look at the, at the whole picture, right? So definitely uh, the statement of purpose is one of the biggest things that we look at, um, you know, get it, um, get some of your peers or professors or to kind of revise the statement of purpose and give you feedback so that you, you submit the, the most polished version um, of the statement of purpose. Thank you. Of course, no problem. Any other questions? Perfect. Okay. So let's see. So let's go, let's hear from a, our, both of our alumni who did our internship uh, this past summer and hear a little bit about what, what their experience was like. Uh, do you want to go ahead and start, Arushi? Sure, I can start. Um, so my name's Arushi. I'm a fourth year at UCSC. I'm studying MCD bio and literature. Um, and I don't know, you might have seen me around. I do HIV testing, so I'm on all those flyers that are all over the bus stops. Um, and so I did my internship with Roots Community Clinic in Oakland, um, and I was helping with a research project that um, is working on understanding barriers to implementing medically or medicine assisted treatment programs for opioid use disorder. Um, and I actually had the opportunity to expand my internship. So um, I was able to get about uh, like another month of paid internship through the community organization. And right now I'm still um, working like two hours a week to just uh, polish up a paper that we're hopefully gonna publish. Um, and it has been just really amazing. Um, I think that it gave me um, it was kind of a bummer that it was virtual, but it gave me a lot of really cool insight into um, telehealth, which is something that I think is becoming really, really, you know, important. Um, and really understanding how telehealth works with, um, you know, underserved populations and the challenges and the, the benefits to that. Um, I think that I guess one of the biggest things that emerged from my internship was an understanding of um, not only uh, opioid use disorder and um, kind of the intersection of that with uh, homelessness and and, um, and uh, uh, a lot of other uh, barriers, but um, also understanding that there's a really large loneliness epidemic that's going on right now. Um, I think that that was one of the things that was most striking to me um, and I was really thankful that, that we have these clinics and in-community um, uh, centers that can um, help bridge that gap and, and to really um, kind of have, have a place that people can talk about things with. Um, and that was really amazing. Um, I think that 
as far as like the, the rest of the HCC stuff, it was really helpful to have all those um, seminars. I think that there was not one that was not, you know, like I didn't learn something in. Um, and I think that I personally don't have a large connection to, I didn't really have connections to any physicians. I wanna be a doctor. Um, so before HCC, I really didn't have a network. Um, and like through HCC, I was placed with like, not only the mentor I work under um, at the clinic, who's an MD, MPH, which is what I wanna do, but um, also another um, physician who works at UCSF. And, um, you know, there's a lot of other um, connections out there. So I think it was really amazing to get to see a peer group that is also just so um, dedicated to what they're doing. So I'd say that. Wonderful, thank you Arushi for sharing. Um, and then we also have Jose Marquez uh, Cuevas, who actually was part of, of our new um, HCC uh, all virtual program, the Health Equity Scholars Program, uh, which we are actually looking forward to having this upcoming year as well. So the just a little background on the on the scholars program. So in response to COVID, you know, there was a lot of a, a lot of uncertain things that were going on, right? Especially with internships that were being say canceled or postponed. So what we did is for the interns who had already placed with our uh, some of our sites, who you know just due to COVID, um, what what we did was we actually started this program with the help of some of our funders um, and different foundations that you know contributed to to our mission. And who believed in our programs and with their help we were able to host 47 uh, completely virtual internships um, that were for around seven weeks and we had over 120 our uh, virtual workshops during the summer. Um, you know, some of them were optional, some of them were, man were more mandatory part of the program, but it, we definitely, um, it, was, it was an amazing experience uh, to be able to put that on. And, you know, we're looking forward to also having that next year. And we have Jose, who maybe can talk a little bit more about his experience with the new scholars program. Yeah, thank you all. And I apologize for coming in a little late. I knew we were having technical um, difficulties. Um, but my name again is Jose. I am a second year transfer, so fourth year uh, majoring in Latin American and Latino studies with politics combined. So I am coming from a non-traditional point where I am not a STEM major, I'm not a health science major whatsoever, but I do have an aspiration of going into public health um, after I continue into my graduate school. So within this program, it, I really found it really, really interesting and really helpful in terms of like actually providing me the kind of the guidance, what I would need for like preparation for um, graduate school, kind of like connecting with other folks that are having like similar interests as mine. I know there was one um, guest speaker they had who had an MPH, who had an MD and a JD. So I thought that was very interesting having like all three kind of backgrounds. Um, and like within this kind of um, program that I was specifically in, again, it was all virtual. So it was kind of time consuming in terms of going into these workshops. But these workshops, even though it may seem like, oh, we went to 120, like it's like a lot, like it really were engaging and really impactful where you learn a lot like you learned about more about telehealth you learned about more about like the um there's this kind of like um notion of east side communities having disproportionate kind of um, resources so east side communities east communities wherever you're at they usually tend to have a lot less resources they don't have that many uh, kind of funding for public resources and, and whatnot. And I really thought that was interesting where there's actually a TED talk about that from one of our guest speakers that we had over the, the, the summer. Um, but again, I would really recommend like applying because I think that even though it may be like you're not maybe you're not part of the internship program that I was, I was part of like the equity scholars program, but you're still able to kind of um, kind of formulate a comprehensive um, what's the word, uh, it's con a consultation report where I was working with a, an organization uh, um, which kind of is a startup company. So they're what they're focused on right now is trying to kind of um, navigate and mitigate kind of type two diabetes since it is flourishing right now in our country um, in terms of providing more um, health and all natural remedies. So I can't really tell you much about it because it is a startup company and I know they've kind of wanted us to kind of be confidential and all in that respect. Um, but I just really cannot like explain how 
useful and impactful this program was for me specifically, just knowing that I was a non-traditional non kind of student. Um, I just thought it was kind of going to be hard for me to kind of go into the path of like public health or health science related field, just because I'm not majoring that right now at the moment. Um, but I think like even within this program that I was in, we have also kind of Jeff, who was here earlier talking about it, also gave us a book that he actually wrote and authored. And it really has like a lot of pages and a kind of a guidance in terms of like how to kind of, I guess, formulate like what your career path is, how to like talk to like folks and network, um, how to just kind of create your own journey as you navigate into like your health profession that you would want to get into. Um, and I'm trying to think what else we went through. It was just so much and like a lot of good stuff that went we went through over the summer. Um, I did have the chance of going into a, a continuing with my, the startup company kind of interning for them, but I just chose not to because I just knew I had other commitments at the time. I didn't want to commit to something and I know that I wouldn't be able to commit fully. Um, and given that like I, it was over the summer, so um, they do not recommend taking a course, courses over the summer, just because it is intensive. It is a, a full, um, like a full long program, so 40 hours a week or even more. Um, but I did take one class. It is doable, but do I recommend it? It just really depends on your work ethic because um, it is a lot. And I think if I kind of, I would kind of say don't, I wouldn't recommend it just because if you're more focused in the work that you're actually doing, it'll just show how much, um, like actually how much more effort you put into it and that way the intern interns or like these organizations see that and kind of, kind of give you that extension of like a job opportunity if you're graduating or if you've already graduated or like even continuing with the, the internship placement with them um but yeah that's just a little bit about the program that i was part of thank you so much jose i appreciate you sharing as well um, so we do have a question uh, from Cassie for virtual workshops. How long are each one and how often? So uh, so there's around 120 hours of workshops that we had this past summer. Uh, most of them are the usual one hour workshops. Some of them, again, are optional and some of them are part of your program. So we, we are uh, pretty flexible with the amount of sessions that you attend. But the, you know, the workshops range from, you know, graduate preparation workshops with you know, meeting with like different organizations throughout the countries, different institutions. Like we, you know, we've had Columbia um, School of Public Health come and do a grad, uh, and you know, kind of like a preparation for graduate school and how to pre how to best prepare for their application. We have the Harvard the Harvard School of Public Health. We've had just different organizations, different leaders throughout the nation who come and and present or do workshops with with our students. Um, and again, this is um, not just only for our all virtual program, but also for our, our internships that are, are going to be in person. Um, they're part of their 10 week program is that they are going to be on the like on the floor kind of doing their internship in person. Uh, but they're also going to be uh, times when there are going to be, say, mandatory sessions or, or more encouraged sessions that you also have to attend throughout your 10 weeks. Um, so definitely everybody gets a taste of the, the workshops that, that we um, kind of put forward. Um, Abu, Abu, do you want to answer the, the other question? Uh, yeah, so... Um... Basically, in terms of like amount of hours, you are going to be uh, uh, working full time. So 40 hours a week, um, five days a week, um, that's usually the norm. And so that's also another reason why um, we do suggest not to be taking summer session because it's go it's pretty hard to be juggling a full time schedule with um, classes and we obviously don't want um, students or our interns to be uh, burnt out, you know, because that's not the point right we want them to really be enjoying their um, their internship and um, and their work. Um, and so, yeah, so it all of the positions are basically like that, um, whether you're in person or if you're doing a hybrid situation. Um, obviously, um, when you're remote, like the hours are a little bit, it's kind of like wonky to kind of determine, you know, like how, like what is a full-time schedule, but that's something that, that usually interns will work with their supervisors to kind of figure out how to establish that. But the gist is um, a full-time 40 hours a week, uh, five days a week. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks, Abu. Yeah. Awesome. 
So um, I, I, I'll, I'll just take a couple of minutes also to share my story. So um, I, I did my internship back in 2016 um, and I was with Kaiser Permanente in Southern California at, at the Riverside Medical Center. And uh, what, what my main project was is I actually worked um, with their diabetic patients. So my goal was to conduct a, a series of focus groups to kind of try to identify the different barriers that our particular patients at our medical center were facing uh, when, it, uh, when it came to controlling their A1C levels. Um, so we kind of, you know, we kind of, you know, there's literature kind of understanding like the different barriers that exist as a population, but we wanted to kind of go a little bit deeper and understand what the barriers are for our service, uh, service area in our particular medical center uh, with our particular Latino patients, right? And in particular, those who were not English speaking. So my goal was to conduct a series of focus groups, kind of do the outreach to the focus groups and then report back to a uh, hospital management to see how we can target those different barriers and hopefully be able to, to uh, help our patients better manage their A1C levels and improve, right? Um, just like, uh, like like Jose um, and, and our other HSC alum, it's, I also got my internship extended um, and that extension eventually turned into a full-time position after I graduated from undergrad. Um, so I was there for a couple of years before I started my master's in public health. Um, and that's kind of where my trajectory went. So, uh, you know, it's about 70% of our, of our um, interns do get offered either full-time positions or get their internships extended. It kind of also depends on where they are in their undergraduate career. You know, if you're a junior or a rising senior, um, you know, after you do your summer internship, they can't really offer you a full-time position if it is available just because you also have the school commitment. But if, say, you're, you're uh, about to graduate or you've graduated, um, you know, a few years prior, it'll, if a full-time position is there and, and some organizations have it, they might offer it to you if, if you know, if they like the, you know, the quality of work and, and if they want you still part of their team, right? So that's definitely a possibility. Uh, I'm just sharing my story and, and kind of like uh, where, where HCC took me. Um, and it was four years ago, so I can't remember all the details, uh, but, uh, but definitely, you know, I, I am very grateful to HCC um, and kind of where I am today. Mm -hmm. Can I ask um, a question, I guess, for both um, Caesar and Jose? Um, let's say if where you are now, um, if you didn't have HCC, do you think that you would have been able to um, accomplish the goals that you wanted to accomplish? Yeah, so, uh, so I can start. So for me, um, definitely when I interned at Kaiser, I, I learned just the, the the limitless possibilities that exist within public health and healthcare. You know, prior to being in an organization such as theirs, I never really knew the extent to what health careers really meant. When I was there, I was like, you could be an MP, you could be an MD, you could be a case manager. There's so many different things that fall under the umbrella of, of health. And I think for me growing up, it was just like, you're either a doctor or there's like nothing else in healthcare, but there's just so many other things out there. Right. And that's definitely one thing that, that Kaiser, Kaiser allowed me to see. Um, and, you know, this is not just for Kaiser, but any other organizations that you're able to see kind of people taking on roles that I never knew were possible or that existed. And definitely now that I've been there, uh, one of my goals in the future is to actually go um, into nursing, nursing school, um, just because I know with nursing, just how many different things you can do with nursing, right? There's not just bedside nursing, which is what I understood nursing to be. There's hospital management, there's uh, project management within nursing, there's, um, you, you know, there's, there's a billion different things under, uh, under that umbrella that you can do. So that's definitely, I attribute it to, to HCC because HCC put me there. And also for me to understand what public health better what public health really was when I was at this organization and which led me to kind of work two years at Kaiser and then pursue my master's in public health kind of really understanding what area of public health I wanted to focus on when I applied because if, if I wouldn't honestly if I, would, if I wouldn't have done had those two years I don't think I would have been um, my road wouldn't have been as clear as, as I as I had it after I finished my time with them. Yeah, and I guess I can answer as well. Um, I think for me, it definitely reshaped how I thought of like specifics 
in terms of like there is the public sector, the private sector, and even how investment in healthcare even is formulated. I was always biased where like, I really don't like businesses. I don't like investment firms just because I felt like they're always about like the capitalist kind of niche. Um, that's how I viewed it. But when I was like, when we had like guest speakers who are invest, uh, investment brokers, um, even like just being in the private sector, I really realized that they're trying to do it so they can actually do it for the betterment of the people. They're not doing it for themselves. And it just really takes that one person to kind of convince you otherwise, because I knew I was really stuck in my bubble. But once I kind of like uh, really talked to that one individual that we had and kind of just really gone in deeper because he was actually one of the my kind of advisors for um, the group that I was part of, like doing that consultation report. And so I really got to know more about like what investment kind of does in, which, in terms of the healthcare field. Um, but I also didn't really realize some other positions like medical scribing, what that particularly entailed, or even like how um, I think like the consultation, like jobs and like medicine, how that was formulated. I didn't know, like, what, it's not just about kind of like business form. I just thought it was always business formatted, but it's just more about like, oh, you're trying to kind of convince these like healthcare workers to kind of like maybe advance their patient's healthcare by like looking at these kind of maybe new prosthetics or new devices they may have. And so I really think our like generation of medicine is really evolving for the betterment of the people, but it's just really kind of like really crazy to me because I'm more interested about like healthcare policy. I don't think I can see myself doing more of like the actual day-to-day like work in terms of being like a nurse or a doctor or whatever but I really like that administration and the policy aspect of it and even though this is kind of geared towards like actually like I mean I wouldn't say it's geared towards but maybe it's like the the public health aspect of this program it really just kind of really dive me more into like oh this is something I'm really interested in. I should really continue in for and so I would really recommend going into this program I, I I can't tell you how much like it's really just really amazing in terms of like how much the exposure you have because once you're in it as well like you come out within being part of their alumni network and I can't tell you how many times I've seen I've gotten emails with so many job postings that they're trying to help you kind of get into they're trying to like get their alumni to be part of like these wonderful opportunities. So this is like a really good um, like uh, organization that really advocates for health equity and kind of like just advocates for like putting people into these professions. I really do think these are one of the like few organizations that are really there trying to help um, young folks get into these professions. Thank you, Jose. Are there thank any you questions? Both. Yeah, thank you both for sharing your experience. I think that was really um, important to kind of know um, and, and also a great way to to show, you know, just the impact that HCC has, you know, even after the internship. Right. And then also one thing that you might have noticed is that uh, both, you know, Arushi and Jose and I, you know, were approaching kind of uh, tackling the health challenges that we're experiencing through, experiencing through different lenses. And that's kind of where we use the statement of purpose and the interviews to kind of gauge what your interests are, what your objectives are, and then kind of pair you up with an organization that's also going to be able to help you meet those goals. Um, that's kind of where the, where the matching process takes place, because we're all in this together, right? But it's just, I know we know that sometimes our strengths and our, our objectives are a bit different from each other, which is, um, you know, hopefully the application of the interviews kind of help us tease that out as well. Any other, any other questions? I know we have just a, a few more minutes. Um, I, I will be uh, sharing all this information over um, with the team. I'll send over the slides and maybe a couple of flyers that maybe we can, you guys can, you know, spread the word or, you know, just um, register for some of our informational webinars in the future. Uh, in case you have any further questions, I'll share my contact information, Abu as well. Um, and if there's any questions, always feel free to reach out to us. Um, we're here to assist you guys. I'd like to just plug our services at the Career Center. If you do decide you want to apply, we have an online document review service where you can submit a resume and have it critiqued by um, someone from our office. You don't even have to show up. And then if you want help with our your statement of purpose, you can make um, an appointment with one of our career coaches as well. So That's awesome. Great. So I will go ahead and share this information over with Christina and the team. 
And if you have any questions, please reach out to us. Uh, thank you, Jose. Um, and thank you, Rushi, for, for joining, for joining um, Abu and I and Jeff. And I think there was a question about oh, um, yeah. the Instagram handle and it is health career connection. <laughs> it's all one word. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all. Have a great rest of your day.